24-year-old Jordan Cayetano is tonight a free man after spending almost six years on remand for the murder of a Chinese national. On April 2, 2011, businesswoman Yan Ying Chen was shot and killed at her shop on King Street. The senseless killing was one of two homicides that rocked the local Chinese community, prompting a countrywide shutdown in the days that followed. Cayetano was subsequently arrested and detained before being charged with murder. During his detention, he alleged that he was beaten into confessing to the crime. That wanton act of police brutality would eventually become the undoing of the case against Cayetano. Senior Counsel Richard Dickey Bradley represents Jordan Cayetano. Jordan Cayetano, who was about 17 or 18 years of age, on the 2nd of April 2011, was arrested in relation to a shooting, death, a murder of a Chinese lady on King Street. Uh, broad daylight, big day. And he has been in prison for five years and eight months awaiting his trial. Uh, his sister, Vanessa, contacted Anthony Silvestre and myself. And we were able to start the trial on the first. We started the trial on the first day of November. However, this trial has some important legal issues because there are two partial statements and also an oral admission in which the police are saying that around 7.30 on the 2nd of April, they were present in the offices of the GSU building on Green Street in the city when a sergeant of police from CIB went over to GSU and John Caetano was asked questions and he admitted to doing the shooting. And where there is a confession, whether oral or in writing, the defense attorneys have a duty based on fact instructions. Obviously, John Caetano told us Yes, he did do the shooting, and yes, he gave the statement or mentioned it uh, out of his mouth that he was the person who did it. Then we would not be defending that person, neither Anthony nor myself would go to court uh, in such circumstances. So, from a legal standpoint, the law is that, in fact, at the start of a trial where there is a confession or where there is an oral admission or a oral confession, that the proper procedure is in fact to inform the court and to do the challenge uh, in relation to those alleged confessions. So that is what took place in this particular case. Interestingly, the case against Cayetano also fell apart when Prosecutor Rene Montero Jr. admitted to the court that the National Forensic Science Service either lost or misplaced the spent shells recovered from the scene of the shooting. As a result, Ballistic testing was unable to be conducted to determine if the shells found at the scene were indeed the same shells from the firearm found on Cayetano after the murder. Justice Trader Gonzalez ruled that the evidence was inadmissible. In this particular instance, we challenged that the supposedly the purported oral admission on Jordan Cayetano that he had shot a Chinese lady for no reason was challenged and witnesses were brought for the two sides. Jordan Caetano himself took the witness stand and was cross-examined. Anthony first took him through examination in chief, stage by stage by stage, which the judge commended uh, the veracity of what they said. And so to me, the decision was handed down by John Gonzalez that the evidence brought by the prosecution, because the lies in the prosecution were not school beyond any doubt, any reasonable doubt at all, that the statement was obtained in accordance with the judge's rules, in accordance with the evidence act, and in accordance with the various case law that sets out to protect persons who are confessing to crime, persons who are in custody. I turned out in our view that in fact the majority is to beat up Titan and in fact sapped his strength and his will 
and was able to get him to either say those words or to claim that he said those words. And today, the judge made a ruling that he could not, as a child judge, and listening to the facts of the case, the evidence that came out, he could not say that that statement was a case voluntarily and freely and in accordance with the laws that govern the matter. Justice Gonzalez also deemed the caution statement and oral confession made by Cayetano inadmissible because his rights were violated when he was threatened, physically oppressed, beaten, choked and shocked with an electrical cord. While witnesses would later testify that Cayetano was never physically abused, they fell silent when asked if he was informed of his constitutional rights. Prosecutor Montero then entered a nulli pros allowing Cayetano to go free. Reporting for News 5, I am Isani Cayetano.